Hello, my name is Megan and welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I'm so glad you clicked on my video and I hope you enjoy my second week of summer school teaching. Okay, so today is Monday and I started this day out super like in a great mood and excited and <laughs> things kind of shifted a little bit and I'll kind of go into that more, but we just talked about our last Minnesota biome which is coniferous trees and so that went pretty good and we were just talking about that and then I had the students write journal pages so let me show you guys what those journal pages look like okay so I felt like I was very clear and I had the students tell me kind of what they felt like were good requirements for them so I said I wanted a narrative journal and I said it, journals need a date and a title. And then we talked about how they need pictures and sketches. So I asked them how many they thought they should need. They said three and 10 sentences, which is the same as two paragraphs. And then I talked about like, oh, we should probably, you know, have some vocab words. So we talked about how many vocab words and stuff like that. And then I was asking them to tell me what some of the vocab words that we've talked about and then kind of like what your story can encompass over here. So I thought it was pretty well organized and I thought I explained it really well. <laughs> um, and you know, I felt like these were very easy requirements for 30 minutes and I even gave them some sentence frames. So you can see over here, I said my favorite place is I like this place because the trees around here are probably so that's three sentences right there and you know this middle one I like this place because could even be expanded to two sentences if they really wanted to and it has nothing to do with the vocabulary words or anything so I was pretty surprised when about half the students turned in their writing. I was a little bit frustrated with 30 minutes of writing and that's what they could do. I guess one of the main things is like, yes, you're going to have students that can do this and do everything like, <laughs> you know, that you ask them to do and all of that stuff. And then you have some students who don't write anything for the entire 30 minutes and you just want to rip your hair up because you just don't understand why they couldn't follow the directions. I guess one of the main things for me that really kind of frustrated me was that some kids just, you know, I gave them sentence frames. I felt like I made it very clear. I explained things multiple times. I went up and helped specific students to really give them that example and still some just didn't finish it. So I actually send it, ended up sending it home as homework for students who did not, excuse me, who did not finish. And um, I told them that if they didn't finish and turn it in tomorrow, which I said, if you turn it in tomorrow, fine, it's not a big deal to me. Like you only had 30 minutes. So if you needed more time, you can go home and do that. But, I said it's their choice if they don't finish it either at home or for the little bit of time I'm gonna give in class that they have to do it during recess and I told them that was their choice so there was a little bit of frustration there of like 10 sentences I just like couldn't understand why they had such difficulty with that um, but I am glad I made it clear because they I did have one student who was like no trees sticks like and saying those were sentences and I know he wasn't doing it because he like has an IEP or anything like that or like really struggles with that he just wasn't taking the time to actually do it so I was kind of frustrated um and I I don't know I just felt like it had to be sent home like I don't think kids are allowed to get out of work just because they can't um use that time management or because they think that if they don't do it that they're just going to get out of it and I don't want them to think that that's what they can do but otherwise we just had um, lunch and recess and all of that and then I'm doing math workplaces again so I have four main activities and then I'll show you the games 
So this one I actually have to change. It was just too complicated and the students just really like did not understand it at all. <laughs> Great, which this was provided by the school. So I don't know if it would just was confusing for them, but there, so there was this one and then matte or uh, colored tile fractions which I kind of didn't totally understand this, so I might need to go look up the directions again. But yeah, that was kind of confusing too. And I feel like that makes me such a bad teacher because like, if I'm confused, then I, you know, the students are confused and there's no way for either of us to like figure it out. So I thought I understood them and then reading over them again with the students, it was just really confusing. So I tried to see if the students could complete them but a lot of them really struggled and I made a bunch of copies so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do going forward if I'm just gonna try to find two new activities or just try to look into these and understand them better um, I just have to think about what I'm gonna do for that because it's kind of complicated and then this was another one provided so it's a get to know you fraction circle um, there is a sheet that goes with it I just don't have it at the moment but you can see it's divided into eighths and then so it says one eighth is your name one fourth is um, your family so you draw like little pictures of your family and things like that and then it has different things for the different parts so this is definitely a good one that you could use at the beginning of the year or even for fraction stuff I mean it's get to know you but the kids can have fun you know writing their name and their family and stuff like that so I thought that one was fun um, a little fun coloring and drawing and writing one. And then the last one is versatile. So I found some fraction ones. There's only two. So I'm just having kids like choose um, between either the two fraction ones or one of the two other ones. But these are fun. Um, if you've ever seen versatiles before, basically they have different work pages. And it's kind of cool because you can assign them to work on a certain page and then at the end, their picture has to or whatever the design is has to match up with this design and it's all independent and they can check their answers at the end so if it's not correct they're going to be really or they're not going to have the same design so they can go back and recheck it themselves but basically the tiles look like this and they're supposed to fit into these little slots so if one um, the answer for one goes into the provided answer for G, then you put that in there and so on and so forth. You put all of these in until you obviously complete the page. And then once you completed that, you can check it yourself. And they have this at all different grade levels. So that's really helpful. But once you have all of them in there, then you can close it, flip it over and check to see if your design matches the design in the book. And it's just a really great way for the kids to be independent and seeing the answers for themselves. And yeah, all of that stuff. And there's only certain, like there's only 12 options. So if your answer is not on there, obviously for some reason it's probably wrong or whatever. So that's just fun and um, I really like these a lot. This is definite thing that I would invest in for my future classroom. Yeah, I just wanted to show you guys quick what this week looks like. I'll just show you for today and then I probably won't end up showing you guys again. But those are the four must do, may do. Um, again, these are just in a packet here so that they can just quickly flip to it for the next time. And then I just took out a couple of math related games. Um, and I really like doing these kinds of things. Like I was talking about last time um, during my long-term sub was the cribbage, but there's also blockus, which is just like a strategy game um, for kind of building that kind of stuff. Mastermind is a good one. The code maker, code breaker. There's Mancala, which is a strategy one and kind of like trying to count up to see if you can win and stuff like that. And then I found this set cubed one um it said it was a grade five nobody played it but you know it is what it is <laughs> all right i've been here for about like 15 minutes longer than i need to so i'm going to go home and i will catch you guys tomorrow
Hi guys, it's Tuesday and we are having quite the day. I am, jeez, if I could stop being so shaky. Um, I've been feeling a little bit like cranky-ish today. Um, I did have to get on a couple of students about their assignments, but the good thing is all of them got the assignment done that I was talking about yesterday. A little bit of work had to be done during recess, but for the most part they got it done, so I was super happy. And I expressed that to them, and we even got to play a game today, so that was awesome. So I'm really, really happy that we did this narrative journal example, because now the kids know exactly what to do for their final project, and this was a really good place to start for a little bit of practice in kind of an easier, um, less, what's the word I'm looking for, like, just a little bit easier of an example, you know, their favorite place and just kind of writing about that and talking about their memories and their senses and things like that. And so it just prepared them for what they're going to have to expect for their final project. So working with these older students, I love making rubrics with them. I think it's a really awesome way to explain what is expected of them and they can kind of choose where they want to be when or like what kind of score they want and they're old enough to make those decisions so this is all their choice so these are what we came up with i came up with the top part here and i just wrote out what their assignment is and then be sure to include and then for the bottom half we worked together to define what a three is that's like meeting the expectations and then we would go into what a four is, and then what's a two, what's a one, and then I already filled this one out and it was just a bunch of none. And so this is just what I'm gonna score them on. The length, making sure they have enough. Vocab, you know, making sure to include these important words that we've been talking about all week. And then some artifacts or pictures that I feel like are important for explaining what's going on. So here at the bottom, I just put in the vocab words that they can use. They've been having a lot of trouble. Plus, these are some big words that might be tough for them. So I decided to include that. But I'm really excited to see their final projects and just kind of what they come up with. So some of them did have to do a little bit of extra work today, but I think some of them came up with really awesome stuff and it actually really helped me know what I really need to focus on over the next few days to help them understand what my expectations are and to just really drive home the fact, like the different things that I'm really going to be looking for and find important when I'm looking at their stuff. So this girl did an awesome job and her picture is so detailed and just Wow, it's just incredible. By the way, the kids are at gym right now. We just finished our number corner, which is just like kind of a mini lesson or just a time to really go over some math facts that maybe we're having trouble with or whatever. But I'm excited to see what their final projects come out to be and I can't wait to share them with you guys too. So here you can see a bunch of notebooks on the floor and these are the kids who are not getting this number corner at all which I feel for them because math definitely is not my forte. So let me just show you guys like what we're focused. So this is up on the smart board and we're focusing on simplifying fractions. And it looks a little bit messy, but it's like, I'm just trying to really emphasize the fact of what the point is and kind of why we do it. And just helping them understand, like especially here with four whoops four sixteenths um <clears throat> that there's more than one way to do it but one way is obviously going to require a little bit more work than the other and then um, when they come back we're going to do making equivalent fractions the other way so i think that will be a really good way for them to visualize both ways we just have to get there because they're just not understanding what they are doing and kind of the reason why and all of that stuff so that's kind of tough for them to be really grasping that idea but we're going through it and we're trying our really very best but yeah otherwise there's not too much else we're just gonna play some games like we did yesterday i didn't end up printing a new game i'm just going to kind of ask the students to just try their best to do um 
the assignments that I already have for them. And yeah, that's about all we're doing for the day. So yeah, I'm super excited and I can't wait to see what the com blah, blah, blah. And I can't wait to see what the kids come up with. So I'll catch you guys tomorrow. I got a lot of work to do. So bye guys. Because the behaviors we see, particularly ones that are problematic and interfering with learning, is actually communicating. It is a voice. It's a nonverbal voice. And what that behavior is communicating is a particular need. What happens is, a lot of the times we take uh, one size fits all.
that's called bergamot. If you are, sorry, the plant is called bergamot. Yes. Okay. All I have to ask you is, please don't waste the cups. We don't have a lot. Of them. Wait. That's okay. I can help you if you can find it in the booklet. I can help you label it. Wait. What about me? That insect okay, is like. Okay. I can like, help you. What about me? Oh, I haven't seen your drawing yet. Then come here. Me and him have the exact same. Look what happened to the truck, it was just rounding. Like that is beautiful. Those look great. I finished. Oh yeah, love my life. So here are the flowers. The wild flowers that the students chose which one they were going to draw on the sidewalk here and then label which is something really important that we've been talking about so these are all of them so if you want to start putting your net right there in that pile i don't see any bees or wasps so we should be good <laughs> butterflies and moths go ahead uh who wants to read that one i will because they're my favorite have four wings that are large and scaled, flutter when they fly. Mouth part is a long straw that is curled up when not in right now. Don't forget to count these two also. Puppy! Laura! Puppy! Right! Go ahead and take a seat on the